Correct exposure has always been essential to good cinematography. Image control in both shooting and grading is governed by the exposures you choose. Since data cameras became the more common medium for production, film cinematographers like myself have had to exchange our light meters for waveforms and expand the knowledge of our craft. First rule of data cinematography, never trust the monitor. There are so many ways it can lie to you. External elements change the way you see the image on the monitor. Your eye and mind adjust to external color temperature and ambient brightness. The most reliable way to check your exposure is with a waveform monitor. It reads exactly and only the information on the sensor and delivers the information in a precise and logical way that you can read clearly and easily, knowing the exposure on every element of the frame with a single glance. There are other tools to check your exposure, such as zebra, false color and histograms. All have their merits and I often use them in conjunction with the waveform monitor, but only the waveform monitor has a standard scale for all types, makes and models of cameras. The colorist will check your exposures on the IRE scale, not with a false color monitor. This is the IRE scale. It rises from 0 to 100. The increments are percentage, 0% being black and 100% being white. Everything below 0% is known as being crushed. Everything above 100% is known as being clipped. These two lines are the parameters of your image. Any signal above or below these parameters is not broadcast legal. If you are after the film look, keep within these parameters. Clipping and crushing tends to make your data look electronic. This line, which represents the black in the frame, is not on 0 IRE because the waveform is monitoring an NTSC playback material. NTSC broadcast in the US limits the blacks at 7.5 on the IRE scale. When shooting data for broadcast, the black limit should be on the zero. The pedestal can be raised during grading to 7.5 if required. This plateau effect is caused by bringing up the whites to maximum 100 IRE. Again, this is only because we are monitoring a graded image. Never flatten your whites like this when you shoot. Your whites should look like this. If you want them bright, have the waveform line sit just below the 100 IRE. You can always push this higher during grading, where you can control the brightness without clipping. This waveform image shows that the material is still broadcast legal, but there will be no detail in the flatline portions of this image. This was deliberate in the grading, as this portion of the waveform represents the window, and I only wanted white without detail, to hide the fact that we were in a small studio using forced perspective with a set made from polyboard and tracing paper. This is the frame the waveform was translating. Let's impose the waveform and make it easier to understand. The waveform is a graph. The vertical y-axis represents the luminance in the frame. The horizontal x-axis represents the image of the frame. That is why when we see the two imposed together, there is a correlation of the two. When you look at it like this, the abstract lines begin to make sense. Let's examine a thin portion of the graph and image. This thin line is the amount and density of the black. The black is the letterbox on the top and bottom of the frame. The vertical y-axis measures luminance, not image. So both blacks, top and bottom, are represented at 7.5 IRE. This peak at 100 IRE represents the bright light coming through the window. These lines, around 80 IRE, represent the amount of light reflecting off of the curtains as they unfurl. This wave, between 25 and 40 IRE, represents the luminance of the robe on the girl's shoulder. The 40% IRE represents the highlight. This dip to 25 IRE is the slightly darker shadow, seen here. On the full frame, this 100% is this window, which is 5 IRE brighter than this window. These two dips to black are the hair, and these lines here, between 20 and 30 IRE, are the robe we can see the right side is 5 IRE lower than the left, which is interesting because I have an opposing graduation on her face, which is represented by this sloping curve. This arrow is on the image. As it moves from left to right across the graduate on her face, the arrow on the waveform rises from 50 IRE to 90 IRE. So I know that the ratio from the dark side of her face to the light side of her face is 40 IRE. This wave, at 24 IRE, is the luminance of the subtle crease on her robe. 
This also tells me that the general luminance of the robe is approximately 20 IRE above black. This window frame is 65 IRE, which is 5 IRE brighter than this one. And here, the key light is 10 IRE darker than the light from the window, 5 IRE darker than the light from this window, and about 7 IRE brighter than the light from this window. That kind of precise information would take ages for me to gather if I were using a spot and ambient meter, and I can gather it all with a single glance. But most waveforms are not presented imposed over the frame. You have to learn to read them, like this. The same logic applies. This wave is the window. This dip in her face is the luminance level of her lips. This is an image from a music video I did in the late 90s for Samantha Cole. It generates a very different waveform to the last image. The most blatant information is that there is no black in the frame. The darkest IRE reading is about 28%, and that is here in the darker area of her hair. The sky is only at 35%, which is difficult to achieve because her face is brighter. If you want to know how I achieved that, watch my Tricks with Filters tutorial. As we get closer to the center of the frame, the wave slopes up to 98%. This area represents her face. I can see the brightest part of her face is 60% IRE and the darkest is 30% IRE. The waveform is the data cinematographer's exposure meter. Shooting without one or not knowing how to read one may handicap you as a cinematographer. In fact, I made a system that streams the image of my broadcast monitor wirelessly to tablets and smartphones so I can always see the waveform and how my light is affecting the frame as I am setting up. Probably the closest thing I have used to a true data exposure meter for the cinematographer. But like good spot meters and ambient meters, waveform monitors are not cheap. There are waveforms and scopes in most softwares though. You have been watching the waveform available in the Premiere. Final Cut also has. A lot of people believe it is much easier to expose correctly in data than film. I disagree. It's actually much easier to exceed your parameters in data. But the potential accuracy of reading and controlling your exposure is resulting in imagery that would be extremely difficult to replicate in film, particularly in chroma and effects work. I hope this information will be useful to you.